Well, hey guys, what is up? Um, I hope that you're having a good day today. Um, so I had a couple people ask me if I would do a, a Bible lesson on, um, you know, endurance, uh, persevering through trials uh, when we go through difficult times, and how do you just keep pressing forward? Um, you know, what does the Bible say about this, and, uh, and how can we gain encouragement from God um, going through these difficult times in life? Um, you know, maybe you have gone through uh, the experience of, uh, you know, the loss of a loved one, uh, maybe a spouse or, or even a child. Um, maybe you've gone through, uh, you know, enduring uh, cancer, uh, any type of cancer, um, perhaps the unexpected uh, loss of a job. Uh, maybe you didn't see it coming and, you know, and that threw you for a loop and trying to provide for your family. Um, uh, maybe you had a, there was a freak accident and your house burnt down. Um, you know, I've known Christians that have uh, had to go through those kind of things. Um, if you're like me, uh, you have uh, had to experience um, uh, the, uh, the unfortunate event of a divorce and um, trying to navigate through that and, uh, um, you know, now being a single father, uh, trying to go through, um, through these trials. And um, how do we persevere? How do we uh, keep going? How do we look to God? Um, what does God say? What does the Holy Spirit say through um, through the men that pen the scriptures? And uh, and what can we learn? How can we um, how can we keep moving when things are hard in this life? So first, I'd like to um, ask you to open with me to the book of James. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, James uh, chapter one, verses two through four, at least to start out with. Uh, there's a couple other passages I like to turn to, but um, if you got your Bible, please open with me to James chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse 2, going through verse 4. It says, Consider it a great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. So if we just have verse 2, that would sound extremely weird. Um, it says, consider it a great joy whenever you experience various trials. That doesn't, that's not, uh, I've heard some Christians trying to explain that um, before over the years. And the problem is that's not where the um, thought ends. Um, it, you're, we're not finding a great joy just in the fact that we're going through trials. The, the great joy comes because we know that the testing of our faith produces endurance. It produces perseverance. And we need to let that endurance have its full or perfect effect um, so that we may be mature and complete, lacking like nothing. Um, I fully believe that in this context uh, that this is when uh, God will send us uh, some difficulties. He will test us. Um, this word here for trials um, it's actually the same word we use to translate as uh, temptation or, or just testing in general. And, uh, and so I do believe there are times when God tests us. Um, but the point of God testing us is to strengthen us in our faith, to get us to rely on Him more. Um, you know, Satan will throw temptations at us. Uh, and the problem is sometimes we don't know when we're going through these things in life, we don't always know if this is... A test from God or Satan if this is a trial from God or a temptation from Satan uh, sometimes it looks the same I think of Job I mean when Job was going through everything he went through he thought at least he credited it to God he thought God was uh, putting him through this um, he and uh, you know ultimately God was in control of Satan you know um, uh, you know he was kind of like a uh, the owner of a dog where you have a dog on a leash, you know, God only let Satan go so far. But I mean, but Satan was the one attacking, um, you know, his family and, and everything that he had. And yet he um, said the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Um, and uh, I guess my point is we don't always know if difficulties are coming from God or Satan. The point of it, though, is that we need to always be looking to God through all of this. I hope that makes sense. Um, God sent us sends us tests to get us to grow closer to him, but Satan will throw us, uh, throw tests our way to try to get us to obviously, you know, get mad at God or blame God, um, and going through these, uh, difficulties. But, but it's like, if you continue reading in James chapter one and verse 13, it says that no one undergoing, um, a testing should say that you're being tempted by God, that, that God's trying to get us to fall away 
from him or get angry at him. Um, that's not God's plan. But we need to uh, look to God through these difficult times um, and really consider it a joy that he's trying to get us to draw closer to him. But I know it doesn't always feel that way in the moment. Um, I know it can be tough, but God's whole point is to try to get us to draw closer to him. Um, also, if you want to turn with me just a few pages over to 1 Peter chapter 1, I think Peter says the exact same thing, but Peter actually I think is a little more in depth. Uh, he gives us a, even a little more detail here um, than what James says in James chapter 1. Over in 1 Peter 1, just for the sake of time, we'll just read verses 5 through 9, if you would, with me. 1 Peter 1, starting in verse 5, Peter writes, You are being guarded by God's power through faith for salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. You rejoice in this, even though now for a short time, if necessary, you suffer grief in various trials, so that the proven character of your faith, more valuable than gold, which, though perishable, is refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though not seeing him now, you believe in him, and you rejoice with inexpressible and glorious joy, because you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. We are being kept by God's power, and we should rejoice in that. Peter, just like, just like James, Peter also says that we need to find joy in this, uh, that that uh, our, that our faith is uh, is being strengthened because of God. Um, he says, he says it might be necessary for us to go through trials. Uh, why? I mean, maybe sometimes we are, uh, you know, maybe we're just getting proud and we're thinking that you know we're everything we got, we're doing it on our own and we don't need God or something. Maybe God says, hey, I'm going to step in and and uh, and you know. Um, make you realize really who's in control, you know, and, uh, and so sometimes we need that, you know, and so God's actually looking out for us, although it doesn't always feel like it in the moment. But in verse six, he says, you rejoice in this. Uh, you know, there in verse uh, seven, he says that, uh, you know, gold is refined by fire. Fire does two things. One, fire destroys impurities. And two, uh, fire will, um, keep what's pure. It will, it will help to, um, what is pure will remain. And so, um, consider these trials like a fire where God's trying to, uh, do away with our impurities and to just, uh, leave what's pure. He wants us to be pure in his sight. And we need to rejoice in this because we are receiving the goal of our faith, the salvation of our souls. Uh, that is, uh, what's important. It's, it's always about setting our mind on spiritual things, not on the here and now, but keeping our focus on what is eternal, on what is spiritual. Um, and, uh, you know, there's just a danger in getting too caught up in the here and now and, um, you know, end up just thinking about ourselves and woe is me. And uh, again, I know that this is easier said than done at times, um, but we need to keep our focus on uh, on things above and uh, and try to make sure that we are looking to God. God is using these trials for our good because he loves us. He wants us to grow closer to him and, uh, you know, realize our dependency on him. There's just one more passage real quick that I would like us to turn to, and that is Romans chapter 5. Uh, Romans chapter 5, if you'll turn over there with me. <clears throat> Romans 5, we'll begin in verse 1. And I just realized I forgot to mention when I was over in uh, James that, you know, going on, in, I think it's still the same context in verses 5 through 8. He says that if we lack wisdom, let us ask of God uh, with full faith and no doubting. But I think it's saying, you know, when, we going through the, when we're going through these trials, uh, we can be asking God and should be asking God for wisdom and how to navigate. You know, we're <laughs> trying to navigate through these uh, difficult times in our life and we need God's wisdom um, in order to, you know, navigate these things properly and, uh, and grow closer to him. So if you're there with me in Romans 5, uh, in verse 1, it says, Since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have also obtained access through him by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also rejoice in, aff in our afflictions, because we know that affliction produces endurance. Endurance produces proven character, 
and proven character produces hope. This hope will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who is given to us. Again, it mentions rejoicing. Whether we're looking at James or Peter or what Paul says here, they all say we need to rejoice when we're going through these afflictions, when we're going through these tribulations, these difficult times, these trials. Not that we're rejoicing in the trials themselves, keep in mind, but we are rejoicing in the fact that that these things can draw us closer to God, that we realize our dependency on Him, that we need Him, um, that He is there for us constantly. He loves us, and uh, and He wants what's best for us. And so, no matter what you're going through, um, we all have different lives, we all have different trials, um, and, uh, you know, I understand some better than others, but some I've never had to go through. And um, And no matter what you're going through, whether it be right now or something will probably happen in the future, unfortunately, because that's the way life is. Um, you know, just look to God in faith, knowing that um, He's there for us, He loves us, and that and that this life will come to an end. Uh, no matter how bad it gets here, it will never be as bad as hell. Hell is that eternal separation from God. All things that are good, all things that are, um, you know, love and uh, righteousness and peace and, and joy and just all things that are good, all things that are godly, um, that is what hell is. And uh, and so, no matter what we're going through in this life, it may feel it may feel like a small part of hell um, in this life, but uh, we keep our focus. Let's uh, keep enduring, keep persevering, um, keeping our focus on God, our faith in Him, and uh, you know, which just means to trust and have confidence in Him. You know, and so um, I hope this is helpful. Um, it's been um, about 12 minutes now, but um, I feel like I blew through this really fast. Um, I didn't get to really expound on things like I would like to, but um, trying to keep this as brief as I can. So um, please, if you guys have any comments or questions or, or disagreements or, or anything, whatever, um, I want to hear from you. So uh, please let me know, uh, and uh, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. I love you. Thank you.